Yeah, what's good, everybody? It's your boy, Matthew Maley, from MatthewMaley.com. Well, week 14 of the NFL has just come to a close, so it's time for another wrap-up video. See how everybody's fantasy teams did, and also do a quick wrap-up of the NFL games. So it is Monday night, and uh, the Monday night game just ended, which I actually thought it was a really good game, but I'm jaded. Um, for those of you who didn't watch it, it was the 49ers against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And first off, got to give it out there. Every time I mention the 49ers, shout out to Jim Harbaugh. Amazing to see what a coach can do just off of, you know, literally they didn't add anybody. They still got Alex Smith. They still got pretty much the same team. And he has coached this team to be an actual team. Um, not only did they win the division, which isn't saying much, but they're actually playing well and beating top tier teams. Um, I will give the Steelers a little bit of a of an out. Big Ben was hobbled as hell out there. Looked like he was playing on one foot the entire night, literally. But whatever. They could have gone to the backup, to Dixon. They didn't. So, that's their choice. But overall, 49ers defense looked really good. Um, their offense looked pretty solid. They had a couple really good drives. Um, they got to get better at the... At, with some red zone, red zone uh, touchdowns, they've gotten more kicks than you can count. Actually, their kicker just broke Jerry Rice's single season points record um, because they've had so many field goals in the red zone. So they really need to work on that before they get to the playoffs. But I'm not a fan of the 49ers by any means. I'm just giving them a shout out and giving them some props for that. So they ended up winning 20 to three, um, and the fact that they were able to hold Pittsburgh to three points is pretty impressive. I gotta say. Um, overall, it was, it was a crazy week. Um, this was the week that everybody waits for, uh, you know, in football when they say any given Sunday, the world can, you know, can end essentially in football. And the world ended officially for the Packers. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about it until they got to 16-0, and but they lost to, the, to uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, which it's well known Kansas City is a very tough place to play. Um, it's been... It, known for years that uh, going into Arrowhead Stadium is one of the absolute toughest places. Plus, having Romeo Cornell coaching his first game there after Todd Haley was uh, was fired, it, players always seem to get up for their inter, for their interim coaches. It always seems, and um, they really had a great game plan and came out and held Aaron Rodgers in check. Plus, plus Jermichael Finley's dr case of the dropsies also helped, but. Uh, Overall, I was very surprised. Um, I thought that, that you know, the last game of the season, the Lions might beat them, um, especially if they were to rest Aaron Rodgers. But this caught me completely off guard. Did not see this one coming. So they have officially lost their first game. Um, and, well, I think that actually is a good thing for the Packers, as sad as it is for me to say that because I hate the Packers. But uh, we'll see, honestly. This might mentally crush them, and they might end up, Losing a couple more games or getting knocked out early in the playoffs, or this might be exactly what they needed. Get the stress of going undefeated off of their brain, and maybe next thing you know, they were gonna, you know, from here they'll just go and kill it. So, next thing, uh, got a great game from uh, speaking of the Lions, the Lions and the Raiders was a great game. Went back and forth the whole time. Um, well, not the whole time. Actually, the Lions were down by, I believe it was 14 or 13 or 14 points. Um, yeah, 13, I think. With it, Through the entire game and into the fourth quarter, they actually had to come on a 98-yard drive that Megatron was huge in. He caught three passes that were huge. One where he was double covered. The ball was under throne, so he had to come back for it. Made a great catch with two defenders draped all over him. Then ended up catching the game-winning um, touchdown pass with, I think, 39 seconds to go. They actually tried a, uh, a field goal, a 65-yard field goal, Seabass, which we all know he's got the leg to kick it. Um, but Indomitian Sue actually, returning from his two-game suspension, got through and blocked the field goal. Um, so that was that was pretty cool. Um, so the Lions were able to win. That actually sucks from the Cardinals' standpoint, um, but we'll get into that a little bit more in, in a second. Um, but overall, it was a great game. Um, I've got a lot of family from Michigan, so a little part of me does cheer for the Lions. So that was cool. Um, definitely was a good game. 
Um, there was a Thursday game uh, between the Falcons and the Jaguars. That wasn't even a game. The Falcons just absolutely decimated them. I think the final was 41-14. to just, just killed them. Same thing with the Saturday game. Um, the Cowboys played the Buccaneers and killed them. I think the total was 30-13 to or 35-13. to It wasn't even a game, to be quite honest. So they destroyed them. One of the other big surprises that I, I definitely was not not expecting was the Seahawks went in and pretty well spanked the Bears. Um, I, I, The Seahawks are one of those teams that just, if Marshawn Lynch gets going or if their defense is really killing it, which both things happen, they can just pick it up. And that's what they did. They ended up, you know, having a really good game. Ended up destroying the Bears. Bears looked awful. Um, I feel bad for Haney because one game he looks good, the next game he looks horrible, the next game he looks good, the next game he looks horrible. You really don't know what you're going to get from there. So you're, it's just been crazy. Um, another game that I actually picked, um, I went uh, picked 12 of the games correct this week, so I'm down by one in my pick pool. Um, but the one game that I, I did as well pick was the Panthers to beat the Texans. Um, I felt that the Texans, after locking up uh, their first trip to the playoffs in their franchise history, that they were going to fall off. What do you know they did? <laughs> so I picked that. Um, shout out to Cam Newton. I'm pretty sure he's got the rookie deer locked up. The only person that I think should even compare with him is Patrick Peterson from the Cardinals. Um, he's run back four punt returns, which is a record period, not just a rookie record. Plus, he busted off another one in the Cardinals game, which I'll get to, that really set up the win. So I think he's killing it as well. He's the only person I could see even, you know, coming close. But it seems like every damn week the guy gets at least a couple rushing touchdowns. Um, I'm speaking of Cam Newton, so I think he's got that pretty well locked up. Um, also, I want to give a shout-out to Reggie Bush. Um, everybody talked about him as kind of a bust. Um, when he was playing with the Saints, he was always more of an all-purpose kind of guy instead of an actual running back. But ever since he's gone to Miami, he's gotten just this second wind or what. I don't know. Um, but he's just been killing it. He had his first 100-yard rushing game of his career, I think two or three games ago. And in this game, he rushed 20, 25 times for 203 yards and a touchdown. So shout-out to Reggie Bush. Um, not a big fan of his, but... Regardless, shout out to him. Ended up uh, getting the Dolphins the win um, over Buffalo. Which, Buffalo, what happened? You guys started off pretty solid and then just. Pew! Um, so I don't know what happened with that. Bengals, shout out to you guys beating the Rams. Um, it actually was a closer game than it should have been. Ended up 20 to 13. I expected that you guys were just going to murder them. Um, just kind of like the Saints did <laughs> to the Vikings. Vikings have had their first six-game losing streak since 1984. They're just looking in disarray. Um, I don't really know what the what the plan is for that team. I think they really got to find a good quarterback first off. And uh, then, really, Adrian Peterson's all that team has. So what do they do? Do they try to move him and rebuild? Do they try to just grab a couple good draft picks and build around him in this draft? I don't know. Um, but Minnesota's, it, it, they've, they've fallen off from where they were, I'll say that. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with them because if you're two years ago, they were a legitimate Super Bowl contender, and now they're a bottom dweller. Um, Another game that I did not see coming, especially after they gave the Packers all they could take a couple weeks back or last week, was the Giants losing to the Redskins. And they didn't just lose, they looked horrible against the Redskins. I mean, they they didn't look like they wanted to even be there. Um, even my boy Jason Pierre-Paul, he got juked so badly. He got faked out harder than than. I don't even want to speak about it because it was sad. So we'll just ignore that. We'll pretend like it didn't happen. And uh, Giants looked ho horrible. Absolutely horrible. Sorry, D. My boy Derek is a big Giants fan. So sorry to say that. But your boys looked awful. Especially when if you you got to win to keep pace, you know, to keep keep up with the, with the Cowboys. And you guys were controlling your own destiny in that division. And now what? So, which, uh. Then brings us to probably the most talked about game all day. Actually, no, no, we'll go one more before then. One game that I was amazed by and actually kind of feeds into the last topic that I was just speaking about was the Jets versus the Eagles. 
I thought the Jets were going to take this game. Um, I did pick the Jets to win it, but the Eagles came out of nowhere and just flambayed them. Ended up final score 45-19. to Just decimated them. I, I don't know where it came from. Honestly, the Jets are, were so Jekyll and Hyde this season. One second, they're looking amazing. Rex Ryan has them playing perfect defense, and Sanchez is serviceable. And then the next game, they get absolutely destroyed. So I really was, was surprised by that. Um, I thought, you know, maybe maybe the Eagles could win, but I didn't think it was going to be that. You know, I thought it was going to be a much closer game, maybe a 24-17 to type of win, 21-24 type of win. But this was what the Eagles could have done all season. This is what people were expecting. And the crazy thing is, as bad as the Eagles were for however long, they're 6-8 and eight right now and could still win the division because they technically hold the tie break over the Falcons. I mean, wow, well, over the Falcons, over the Cowboys and the Giants. So if they can get tied up, they can take the division. It's terrifying. Um, then before I get to my, you know, teams, we'll get to the game that was talked about more than anything has been talked about this entire year in sports. And that was the Broncos versus the Patriots because people just can't stop talking about Tebow. Like, literally, I agree with you, Stephen A. Smith, which if you don't follow Stephen A. Smith on Twitter, you should. He's a funny dude. Um, he, for those of you who don't watch First Take, um, which is another show you should be watching, shout out to Skip Bayless as well. Um, at Real Skip Bayless, check out at ESPN First Take as well, and at Stephen A. Smith um, while I'm shooting out all those on Twitter. Um, but literally, First Take turned into First and Tebow for the past two weeks. I understand we're all impressed what he's been able to do. 7-1 and one as a starter, six-game win streak. I get it. It's impressive. He turns on his Tebow time in the fourth quarter, and nobody can stop him. It's divine intervention whatever. So, I didn't understand what the big deal was with him going into New England. I'm sorry, with New England coming into to Denver. Personally, I didn't think there was any shot. Um, you got to look at the competition that, that Denver was playing against. Also, you got to look at their defense. Neither one of uh, the competition was way better this week, and their defense didn't show up. And while Tebow actually looked pretty good, I think he had one of the better passing days of his career. He threaded a couple passes in there that I was very impressed with, to be quite honest. But their defense didn't show up, and at the end of the day, it was Tom Brady, it was Bill Belichick. And that's really all you need to say. As uh, good of a feel-good story as this is, and as you know, impressive as he has looked, as, as Tebow has looked, at the end of the day, he's still Tim Tebow, still doesn't have great you know, quarterbacking ability, going against quite possibly in the top three best quarterbacks in history with one of the best coaches in history, as much as I despise him and it kills me to say that. It is true. So I, I really got pretty much what I expected out of that. But um, I don't know. Some people thought there was a chance. Skip Bayless being one of them. So I didn't. So on to the two games that really mean something to me, that hit me in my heart. We'll start off with the sad one. Um... Sunday night game, Chargers versus the Ravens. Um, I don't know if maybe it was a, just a long plane ride to San Diego from Baltimore or what, but come on, son. The Ravens didn't show up, and it's happened before, happened against the Jaguars. Um, I don't know what it is. I, I, I just don't get it. Like, the Ravens had a chance, especially with, you know, knowing – that the 49ers were playing well, and there's a good possibility they were going to beat the Steelers. They could have gone up two games in that division. I, I just don't, I don't get it. Like, especially when you get Ray Lewis back. I mean, he he's your heart and soul. I, I just, I don't get it. They they looked horrible. They ended up losing 34 to 14, but it wasn't even that close, honestly. Like, it was like 30 to seven at one point, I think, or no, 31 to seven. Yeah, because. Then in the fourth quarter, the Ravens got another touchdown. But, I mean, it wasn't even close. If I'm not mistaken, Ray Rice had 10 carries. He is your offense, and you have 10 carries? I get it. You guys were playing from behind. You got to put more, you know, more of the game on Flacco. I understand that. But in the same sense, you still got to have at least somewhat of a balance because 
for one thing, the Chargers have the number one pass defense, if I'm not mistaken. I think they do. Or the top five number or pass defense. So Flacco is just going to be testing them, testing them, testing them, which led to a couple interceptions. And just looking bad, honestly. And I, I also think San Diego's been looking horrible all season. This is how good they could have been, in my opinion. They are a good team. Ryan Matthews looked good, got two touchdowns. Nice jump over the pile, I'll give him that. But it was just, oh my God, come on, guys. Um, Terrell Suggs still had a good game. Didn't get any, they, what was so amazing, they didn't get any sacks. How did the, how did the Ravens not get a sack the entire game? But uh, Suggs still played pretty well. Um, so shout out T-Sizzle um, <laughs> from Ball So Hard University. But um, it was just very, very disappointing to see. You know, they had such a such a chance. Um, they essentially had... For they were in, they had the number two seed locked up. Actually, no, they had the number one seed potentially locked up. With that loss, they dropped to the number five seed. Thankfully, they were able to win. So uh, I'm sorry. Thankfully, wow. Thankfully, Pittsburgh lost. So because they hold a tiebreak over Pittsburgh, they now are in first place in the division. But we'll see what happens. Um, they got to, in my opinion, they need to win out. I really think they need to win out just so they can lock up that division, get a first round bye, and all be gravy. That's what we're hoping happens. So let me get to the game that made me happy. <laughs> the win for my, of my two teams since the Ravens lost and they got destroyed how badly they did. I can only hold my happiness with the Cardinals. And I know they're playing the Browns, and I know the Browns aren't a very good team. Though if you listen to Jay Crawford, also from First Take, he'll tell you they're a lot better than they play. Which I do think they are. They're in a tough division. And you know what? They have some They have some weapons. Um, Peyton Hills is a beast. Josh Cribbs is a beast. Um, but... Wow, like the Cardinals, I was impressed. Your defense did it. Through the whole game, you were, you were coming from behind. I got to say, it shouldn't have been as close as it was, but the Browns actually played pretty well. Um, John Skelton started again. Kevin Cobb um, still took that knee to the back of his head, so he had concussion symptoms and wasn't able to play. But Skelton played like a beast. Um, overall, he ended up with 313 yards, went 28 for 46, um, with one touchdown, um, Beanie Wells got the other touchdown, and uh, we had we ended up winning um, twenty to seventeen. Going into overtime, we put together a great drive to get us um, into overtime uh, to tie the game up, and then in overtime, Patrick Peterson busted off like a fifty-yard return, then a great throw to Fitzy along the sidelines, like a thirty-yard gain. And uh, from there, we were able to kick the field goal and win. But just overall, I thought it was a good win. Um, just thought it was a really good team win, um, which is what I think that we could have been doing all season. Like I said last game, when we beat the 49ers, I really felt like this was possible the whole season. It just didn't ever get there. Um, we finally had a very solid team win. Early Doucette had a couple great catches. Andre Roberts had a couple great catches and a touchdown. Um just overall, I mean, we played very well. I was very impressed with Skelton. I was impressed with Beanie. He ended up with 58 yards, but he had a couple good runs. Same thing with Hyphen, uh, LaRon Stevens Howling. Um, and really, our defense played very well. So we got some very good third down possessions, or third down stops when we needed. Um, and we didn't get it. We didn't get any interceptions. Uh, we did get one fumble recovery, but it just was overall a great defensive and team win so shout out to the Cardinals you guys really turned it around and guess what we have a chance to make the playoffs I don't think it's gonna happen um, it's a very long shot the essentially the Lions need to lose um, the next two games we need to win the next two games to even have a shot and that isn't even all there's some other things that have to fall so it probably won't happen but it is what it is so overall week 14 was was probably the most exciting week of football of the entire season um, if you ask me, at least, um, I think it was was pretty awesome. Um, so, what about you guys? How did your teams do? Hopefully, everybody had a had a great one. And I'm sorry, this is week 15. Derp, I'm dumb. Uh, week 15 was the most exciting of the football season. Um, so, hopefully, your teams won as well. And uh, now we we'll get to the not as important thing to me because I'm not in it, but the fantasy aspect. Um, I was in two consolation rounds. The one consolation round was for my team that had was in first place um, in my league, then got lost. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, and lost the first week to the last place team because everybody gets to play in the playoffs. 
I ended up in the consolation round, scored 144 points and lost because I went up against Calvin Johnson, who scored 52 points on his own. So that was tough. Um, then in my other consolation round, I don't even want to discuss it because this is the league where I've scored 200 points before. Everybody does crazy bonuses. And my team scored 60 points. Like, that might be the lowest score in history in that league. Well, I think I actually had one lower than that, so did my boy Trayvon. So, between Trayvon and I, we have the complete cellar of that basement, cellar, floor. We've got it all covered. But then in my other two leagues, sadly, they don't do a consolation bracket or anything like that. Um, just want to give a shout-out in the one league, um, the BFFL league, which is like the Barrows league. Shout-out to my boy Steve, the Fuster Clucks. Um, yes, that is his name. Um, when it made it to the championship game, so hopefully he takes it down. He's playing the Fighting Rainbows, so hopefully he can he can take it down. He beat a uh, this guy at man card, guy named Andy. Um, thank you. Who uh, talks a lot of mess, so it's beautiful to see him get take an L there. So good luck, Steve. Hopefully he take down the championship since you know, I got knocked out first round. And then in the other league, the Any Given Sunday League, shout out to my boy Cam and my homegirl Jen. Once again, for the second straight year, it might even be the third straight year at this point. I don't even know why anybody plays in this league. It's always you two in the championship game. But uh, you guys are both in the championship game again. So the Bipolar Penguins are playing against the Holy Molars for the championship. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. But good luck to both y'all. And also, a little reminder for everybody who watches the league, the season finale is coming up this coming Thursday. Looks pretty damn funny. So I hope everybody gets to check it. Um, and if you are watching the league... You better be watching it. Start watching it. Seriously. Even if you don't like fantasy football. My cousin hates fantasy football, but he loves the show. Absolutely hilarious. So, check it out. So, once again, Matthew Manley from MatthewManley.com. Apologize, the video got a little wordy. Went on for a while, but it was such a good week of football. I wanted to do a, a complete overview of all the games as well as fantasy. So, thanks for sticking with me <laughs> through the video. Sorry it was so wordy. But, uh, hopefully you liked the video. And, uh... Uh, hopefully you like my analysis of everything. So hopefully your fantasy teams are still in the playoffs. Hopefully you guys are playing for the championship game. And hopefully your real teams are making a final playoff push as well. So till the next week or until my next video, it's your boy Matthew Maley from MatthewMaley.com signing off. Of course, you can check out the rest of my videos up on MatthewMaley.com. While you're at it, check out the rest of the site. Maybe leave me a comment over on the discussion tab. I like that. Appreciate it. Check out the rest of my videos. I almost got everything uploaded from the whole past year. So there's probably about 100 videos on there that hadn't previously been. So go check them out. Um, of course, if you're up on YouTube, you can always just go ahead and uh, search for MatthewMelly.com on YouTube. See all my videos on there. While you're at it, maybe throw me a like. Maybe throw me a comment. Maybe subscribe to the channel. And then watch it 100 times. That'd be cool. Just my two cents. <laughs> of course... As always, follow your boy up on Twitter. Check me out at Matthew Maley. Uh, posting a lot lately. Been tweeting, retweeting, posting everything. So, uh, especially like I said during Sundays, anything with some sports is where I'm at. So, and then of course, up on Facebook, like the uh, Matthew Maley Poker page. That's where I got all my biggest updates, and uh, you can keep tabs on everything that's happened in the land of Matthew Maley. So until the next video, your boy Matthew Maley signing off. Hope everybody had a great weekend, and your week starting off. At least decently. Hopefully better than my Monday. And uh, till the next video. Peace out, y'all.